Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Hey instrument pilots, welcome. You made it to session number 11. We're going to be talking about lost comms. Now lost comms is really, really, really simple. If you thought the last session was simple, the way to this is even more simpler. So lost comms, uh, if you want any questions on nitty gritty stuff from lost comms, you look at a 91-185 in the far end. Um, so you have to fly the highest of, in case you do have lost comms, for the highest of the MEA, so minimum IFR altitude, the expected or the assigned altitude, and then you have your Avenue F, you fly those routes in order, and then there you go. So uh, that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, so uh, lost comms, it's really important to understand lost comms because if you do have rated communications failure, guess what, you can keep going. And that's the whole heart of instrument rating too. If you take off, let's say you're flying from point, uh, flying from point A to point B, and you're flying from here, 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 they're gonna expect you to arrive at B at whatever Zulu, so whatever time, blah, 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 at that time. Here, they're gonna expect you to fly at whatever altitude, so whatever, whatever, whatever altitude. What they do, as soon as you leave A, you're going to get an, a clearance. You're going to get a clearance for that route. Once you are cleared, you're going to leave at A. So they're going to clear this route for you while you're flying this route. So no other airplanes will be crossing or getting in your way while you're going in case you have radio failure. So before you leave A, you'll, you'll get your craft, you get your clearance, your route, your assigned altitude, your frequency, and your squat code. So once you leave, you're, they're going to know how fast your aircraft is going to this point. So be, between here and here, let's say it takes you, I don't know, 10 minutes. So from that 10 minute window, they're not going to allow any aircraft to, to fly in this air in this area now once you're over here this little sector kind of open, opens up for other aircraft that may have filed other ifr flight plans that's why sometimes when you actually are sitting on the runway waiting for departure they may say a hey, hold for release or, or or whatever because you have to wait until that allotted uh, allotted route is actually clear so you can actually fly through there in case you have radio failure and the same thing goes with this route and then this one and then of course they could amend your your routes according to while you're flying that happened to me many times um but anyway let's say with all that being said and you get radio failures right here boom now if you turn back around you can't talk to anybody if you do turn back around well then you may be going into other traffic that may not know that you're there and guess what you can't say anything to them because you don't have any radios so that's why it's very important that if you do have radio failures, I mean, if you just have radio failures, then you just keep on going. You keep on going your assigned route and keep on going. And then they're still going to expect you at that specific time. When that time is come, the tower will literally clear the runway and because they're going to be expecting you to arrive and land at that specific time. Um, that's why we have these acronyms to help us remember what to do in case of a radio a radio failure now if you do have a radio failure before you squawk 7600 i guess i can write that up here too 7600 before you squawk 7600 troubleshoot that's one of the things that your examiner will probably be expecting you to say when he says okay you have radio failure what do you do oh well i gotta do 7600 then i'm gonna no troubleshoot so troubleshoot, maybe your radials are all the way down. Maybe your, um, maybe your headphone jack on your side does not work. Well then unplug your headsets, plug them into the passenger headsets. It would be annoying because you have to press the passenger's PPT on, there, on the yoke on the other side. But 
at least you have radios. Um, so make sure you troubleshoot first before you go to the 7600 and then, and then follow the loss comp procedures. So moving on with the loss comp procedures. MEA, so this, is, this deals with altitude. So MEA, so M is standing for the minimum IFR altitude. It is not the MEA, it's not the minimum in route altitude. Let's say you're flying in an Aroka. The MEA for a, for a, uh, on a low IFR chart, will say something like, I don't know, they'll have something like this. And, I don't know, something like that, right? And then over here, you go. So this is your MEA right here, 5,000 feet. But let's say you're not on this route. You're not on this Victor Airway. Or let's say you're over here. The Oroco over here, let's say is, I don't know, um, 1,800 feet. So your minimum IFR altitude, fly the highest of is 1,800 feet if you're, in this, if you're in this area flying this way. So that's what the M is for, so minimum IFR altitude, that's what that is, not the MEA. It's kind of confusing because this acronym is MEA, but that's your minimum IFR altitude, not your MEA, so be careful with that one. The next is your expected, your expected altitude. So they will tell you, you are clear for takeoff. So if they give you an expected altitude, then you fly your expected altitude. Now, sometimes this altitude can be higher than your MEA or your uh, Aroka or your minimum IR altitude, whatever you're at. And if that's the case, then you're going to fly your expected because that's higher. Now, if you have your assigned, let's say you're, let's say you're assigned to fly at 6,000 feet. Well, then guess what? You're flying at 6,000 feet. It doesn't matter if you were if you were supposed to fly here at uh, let's say 3,000 and then over here you're at 6,000 6, or whatnot. If you're right here and you have uh, uh, radio failures, guess what you're flying to? You're climbing to. You're climbing to 6,000 because that's your highest of the MEA. So that is your altitude. That's how you do the altitudes. Now, going off to routes. Okay, so the now this, you have to find the highest of for the altitudes. Here is the route, and you have to fly them these in order. So in order, so the first is going to be assigned. So you are assigned to fly to that fix, and then that fix, and then that fix, or whatever. Or if you were not assigned anything, then you're going to be going to whatever you were vectored, vectored for. If you weren't vectored for anything, then guess what? And then you're going to be going to you're going to be flying to what you were you were expected. If you aren't given anything expected, I don't know where your where aircraft you're taking off or what airport you're taking off from, but then you finally just f go as filed. Okay, so another thing about lost comms is uh, that's literally it. I don't really have anything else to say about uh, lost comms. You got your squat code, remember troubleshoot first, um, MEA, Avenue F, uh, do these in order, route. Hot fly the highest O altitudes. Just remember, don't get confused on this one. Uh, minimum IR in instrument altitude, not your MEA. Um, but I don't really have, that's literally it. If you have any questions, if you think I missed anything, put them in the comments below as always. I'll see you guys in the next session. Until then, keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. I'll see you guys next time.